<laughs> what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast presents Scaracter Appreciation Month. Today on the on the podcast, we have someone from LA Haunted Hayride who absolutely slayed the event this year. This is AJ. You may better recognize him as Reggie at LA Haunted Hayride. AJ, how you doing, man? I am wonderful. Happy belated Halloween to you. I know. it's uh, Here on the Nights of Horror, we celebrate Halloween year-round, so it never ends for us. Much like Midnight Falls, it never ends. Absolutely, Halloween never ends. Halloween never ends. Um, so, let's let's just get into it, man. Because this All character right. that you brought to the hayride this year was freaking phenomenal. Man. Thank you so much. Um, you are so spot on with the improvisation there. Um, I love how you guys bring the story to life. You and the other characters, man. Just there was literally forty-five minutes we just spent talking to you guys, and it was amazing. Like, tell us how do how do you go into the mindset of just like every night gonna improv something and get the story out there? Like, what what goes into that to prepare for that every night? Well, first of all, thank you so much for the kind words on that because we yeah. love more than anything else having people like you guys who play along with the story and want to learn more about it. You know, that's what yeah. we live for. Uh, a lot of it comes from our personal backgrounds. I know a lot of us, myself included, are professional actors outside of the haunt world, and I trained with the Groundlings, yeah. where Elvira and Pee Wee Herman are some of their alums. So improv is something I really love doing, and with a cast that also understands that and has experience with that, you know, we just felt unstoppable. Definitely. Having each other's backs with that was such a pleasure. Definitely. A group effort, you know? We, uh, yeah, because I remember just that night we went, that was, the, this was the first year I ever went to the Hayride. And I couldn't have chose like better year because this was the first year they, they introduced the Midnight Falls storyline, which I thought was freaking awesome. I love the whole backstory behind it where they're trapped in the 80s and Halloween night. It's just it's such a freaking awesome storyline. You have, you know, live performances by Monty Revolta, which I thought was hilarious. He's amazing. Yeah, he is hilarious. And, um, you know, as you're going through the hayride, you're you're uncovering more of the story than, you know. What we did after the hayride was then we started interacting with all, you know, everyone, all the characters and everything. And I think we had the most interaction with you, <laughs> uh, the Reggie character, because I don't know, man. We just kept going back to you and you kept sending us to other people and then we'd find out more stuff from them. And then we'd come back to you to give you more information. And then eventually, after all the interaction was done, you led us into the maze to further the story of Midnight Falls, which I thought this is this is awesome. This is cool because this is showing that not only do they have a story that they can tell, but eventually you're just going to lead them into the mazes, which furthers the experience more. Going into um, an event like that, do you guys talk about before the event, um, okay, I'm going to send this. If these people come and ask me this, I'll send them to you. Uh, you'll come back to me. Is there something that you guys all planned out like going into this event, or was it like something that was given to you like, okay, this character will be having interactions with this character more than this character? Well, it's kind of a combination of both, because when we had our first rehearsal, or even before that, we were given a lot of information from Plague Productions regarding extensive history of these characters and how they feel about each other. Yeah. There was one particular sheet that I remember where it, uh, so it lists all of the characters and like so let's say the top of the sheet says, you know, Reggie, mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll have a list of the other character names, so Jill St. Stevens, and then it will list what Reggie thinks about them okay. and each one of us got a different sheet for like what our character thinks of everybody else and it was really funny we noticed early on that Herschel the ice cream clown and Reggie were kind of the two characters that came up in everybody's sheets with like unfavorable reactions <laughs> so, wow. it was like Jill is disgusted by Reggie everyone thinks Herschel is weird and annoying because he doesn't talk and it's, it was really funny like we already knew like we, we read our sheets and we're like oh okay so we don't like each other <laughs> yeah that's, that's hilarious because your character was of course the um, the cook he, the one man band of Midnight the Midnight Falls Diner. That's right, yeah. Falls Diner. <laughs> um, and we had such a fun time just talking with you about that. I remember there was even times where uh, our our friends from TLAV, uh, our friend Tim actually, he was the one that was really the one kind of interacting with you the most for our footage and I remember he was just coming up with catchphrases left and right for you, and it was just, it was the greatest because... Reggie Guaranteed. Reggie Guaranteed was one of them. Uh, I remember he said, shoot for the stalls and fall back to Falls Diner. That and was then perfect. That one, that one was hilarious. Um, I, I don't know, man. There's just so much stuff that we that we had fun with with you. I mean, you like I said, you leading us to, of course, you know, the, the cheerleader, the jock, 
you know, you having different stories with I spit in the jock's burger. Don't call him over here because I'm, I'm afraid he's going to find out. There's just it. It's just the little stuff like that that just makes me like events like this because I feel like I'm really also part of the story as much as you guys because you put a, you put your audience in this in this kind of way where you're, you're kind of looking over and you're seeing all these characters and then like you know you're starting to unravel the story little by little and then when you when you brought up the midnight mortuary mm -hmm. you're like I, I followed them back and you know I, I would hear weird things you go through the midnight mortuary and then you start unraveling all those weird things and um, I don't know man this this was probably the year the cast for this was just I cannot put into words with that. You guys really brought this experience to life for us. Thank you so much. I was really honored to be a part of this cast. Yeah, it was such a great cast. So with every haunt, there's always some great moments, you know, that not only scare actors have, but you have with, of course, um, you know, your audience and everything. What are some of your favorite moments that you've had this season at the Hayride? Because I know there's probably so many that you can think of and – there's some there's probably some that you probably maybe forget just because you're so into the moment of the character at the time it's just like once one thing happens you go to the next thing and that's like oh wow that was just as great you know well i'd like to start that list with interacting with you guys on the first night oh that was because fun. i going into it i was a little nervous for this one admittedly because it was such a radical concept for haunting it's more similar to say ghost town alive yeah. than your typical scare zone and i wasn't sure are people going to react to this are they going to want to interact with us and you know having you guys there on the very first night and proving to us right away yeah people will want to learn our stories was really refreshing and really changed everything so thank you for that oh no problem uh the thing that the things that stick out in my mind and this is really a testament to our management as well is that they let us do so much stuff and they basically said here's all the information you need to know about these characters now let's see what you can do with it so a lot of like some of my favorite moments came from the incidental things that Reggie was that I later came up with that got approved for example I'm an Uno champion in real I life. love that dude. and Reggie got permission to play Uno with guests I love that, dude. That's awesome. It was so much fun and just a great way to get people, for example, like off their phones or to engage yeah. with people more. Just whip out the Uno cards. They're like, all right, let's play. Let's do it. That's uh, great. Another one of them that sticks out in my mind uh, that I, I – children are an integral part of Halloween. Yeah. And they always will be. And having – children be able to interact with us at this event you know it doesn't mean we're like soft characters per se we can be scary for those we need to be scary for but having kids come in and be introduced to a world of haunting or halloween through midnight falls you just show them that halloween doesn't have to be as extreme as yeah. you know when you're an adult i i really like that mm. i think those moments really stick out of my head you know if a kid was particularly scared or whatever reggie could come and you know meet seymour my talking pumpkin that i made and that yeah so talk a little bit about this because this was something that we didn't get to uh, really experience this happened later in the season with the pumpkins Tell, uh, explain a little bit about the pumpkins so uh later in the season we started developing the concept that reggie was an award-winning pumpkin carving champion nice and all of the things that reggie was making Making were very absurd but they had very deep meaning to him yeah. I'll, I'll talk more about that later but this particular one this is Seymour uh, I found a real pumpkin out in town square that was cut evenly down the side like it's like that for example and it was cut like that and nice. it was open and I was like who did this and why is it that way so I picked it up and turned it into a puppet because that's what you do <laughs> and it lasted only about two days and so I made this artificial one to keep the joke going and so basically that was where a lot of our content came from was what do you find on the ground in town square yeah. what do you find in the trash that guests are throwing away right there you know like yeah, yeah. stuff like that and see more was one of the concepts that got born from that that yeah because i saw this i remember seeing on uh i think on your instagram week after week just uh you know come visit reggie the famous you know the best pumpkin carver and all that <laughs> which i thought was hilarious um and another thing that i loved about your character too was uh how how much in detail you would go with in talking about um, the Falls Diner? <laughs> now the Falls Diner is obviously a staple of your character, and you know uh, your story for the you know every night is you know it's Halloween. You you think that Halloween should be kind of like a vacation, like a day off, where it should be like a celebrate like a regular holiday is. You know you have the day off. No one should be able to work. You should be able to just celebrate Halloween. So your character kind of sneaks away from work. The one man band sneaks away from work and goes and celebrates Halloween with the town, um, and then you tell stories about, uh, you know, your your you, you know, 
did you have today's special? Although I wouldn't have today's special because it's yesterday's special. Mm -hmm. uh, little stuff like that or how you would go into detail about, you know, I, I would pull out one of the ones I remember is you, you said something like I'd pull out salami, da -da 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 -da, dice it up and then throw it out there. And then there was just small stuff like that um, going into this event, which I was like, oh, my God, this this is fun. I could stay here all night and do this. I really can. Um, when you come up with like stuff like more go back to the improvisation when you when you're coming up with stuff on the spot with guests um is it something that where the guest says something you're like oh maybe i can introduce this or is it something like every night you're like i'm gonna try this instead of this well with reggie i had to come at things a little differently than i normally would because one of the hallmarks of my character is he never knows when to stop talking yeah so it was basically like regardless of whether or not a guest was asking about the exposition, they were probably going to get the exposition from <laughs> me. And it was just going to be this flood of information. Um, our most unwilling victims were those at the picnic tables, for example, who've just yeah. sat down to eat. If I'd see that, that's a, that's what I call a captive audience. There you go. Reggie would just go and start listing off all this stuff about this or that. <laughs> and other times it does come from what guests say, you know, like from you guys asking questions, like, you know, Tim saying, is there gossip about Miss Midnight Falls? Yeah. Well, then there you go. It triggers the, yes, the we gossip. do have some gossip. There you, you go. Know? So a little bit of both. But for Reggie particularly, it's just like, even if it's not relevant to our conversation, just keep talking, you know? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm loving the story of, uh, you know, I remember you sent us off because you wanted to have a date with one of the people uh, and you told him to meet him at midnight. Mm -hmm. Now, that's that was a crucial part of the, of the plot because at midnight, everything resets. Yes. Again. So that was a crucial thing where it's like even if, you know, they agreed to say yes to this date, when midnight comes, you guys are going to get reset. And you're not going to remember a thing. Exactly. And that was the thing where uh, when I was when because uh, I actually considered going back and I really should have. But that was the thing when I was talking to Tim about it, I was like, let's go back. He goes, you think Reggie remember us? I'm like. Dude, he'd probably be in character. He probably wouldn't remember you because everything gets reset <laughs> at midnight. He'd probably look at us, be like, "You guys look familiar," you know, kind of play that kind of gimmick, which I think would have been would have been really hilarious. But um, there was a couple interactions you had with um, the cheerleader. What was her name again? Jill. Jill, and uh, she was your typical '80s cheerleader, um, like you see in the movies. That like she, you know, she was the pretty kind of. I'm better than you all kind of type people, which I loved her character about. Like, like that really brought that 80s nostalgia to life. One of the funniest moments I remember we had with you was we were talking to you about um, Roadkill Ranch and everything, and she comes by and says something like, aren't you supposed to be at work, loser? And you kind of turned in shock and turned back at us and told us that was a drive-by shooting. <laughs> I just remember looking at you and looking at everyone else and just dying. Like, I, I kid you not, the videos we've made for the Haunted Hayride, I've watched time and time again just so I can hear you, dude. Because you really brought this event, and as well as the rest of the cast, I mean, so much interaction with everybody, it, that really brings the event to life. Going into, uh, like you said, the mindset, uh, when we came in that opening day, you guys were just kind of scared that no one was going to really interact with you guys. And yeah. when people started doing that, how does that you know? How does that make everyone feel at the end of the night? Oh, you, it was you, so refreshing. Yeah. It was like this wonderful feeling to know that the amount of work that we put into it, and you know, learning about our characters with each other, was being appreciated. And can, and then I think that kind of gave us permission internally and externally to continue growing the characters. Yeah. Like past that opening night, so much just continued to get added onto it. Like the pumpkins and whatnot. You know, knowing that people were interested to learn about our characters really gave us the freedom to just make it even more obscure. And my God, Jill has so much information on her character. Oh my that, God! That like got there later in the season. It was great. That yeah, because her character was, you would tell stories like, she was with the jock, but the jock's breaking up with her. And you guys got that on video when yeah. he came up right behind like, her no. and was denying it, which yeah. was perfect. Yeah, I, I was like, that couldn't have been more perfect timing. <laughs> um, I loved, of course, the the exterminator. What yes. was his name? Darren. Darren. Yeah, went up to uh, you know, we were hearing stories of him having secret like a secret kind of crush on Miss Midnight Falls but then when you'd ask Darren about it he didn't know who she was <laughs> she had a thing for him because you know she wanted a a, a, a a man with like a steady paying job and just to kind of support her and everything and like we had an interaction with them where when we when we, when we confronted Darren in front of in front of Miss Midnight Falls she like just lost her, her crap on us and I thought it was hilarious um, and on that note I have something to show you if you'd like to see oh yeah our season 
So I have with me a bag of props, which Reggie, I had a lot of pockets in my apron. Yeah, yeah. And I'm grateful for that. And a lot of what started happening later in the season was a lot of prop gags. But one of the concepts, once we realized people were actually enjoying interacting with us, I had, I had spoken to Ted and I said, what if we introduce a Ghost Town Alive kind of task-based storyline? Nice. And what we ended up with here was a series of anonymous love letters Whoa. that circulated around Midnight Falls. That is so, so cool. So if you want to take a look at that, yeah. this one came between Darren and Jennifer. Do you mind if we read it? Absolutely. All Go right. Ahead. This says, Midnight Falls bait and tackle October 31st, 1985, Halloween. My dearest beloved, I've longed for you. I've longed for you ever since I first laid eyes upon your beautiful face, considering how important I am in Midnight Falls. My time with you is never enough. Whenever I see you, my heart burns with passion. I beg of you, please meet me in the town square tonight during the Halloween festival. I need your warm embrace. Soon, soon, hot for you. So these would this circulate is... amongst the characters and, uh, you know, get some questions going with guests. Like, who do you think wrote this? Do you think this is from Darren? And Darren would like to say, oh, it's from the bait and tackle. Something's fishy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think this is this is awesome. I really wish I would have went back now just so I can interact with these because I, I really love the way these look. Um, and that's something that I was talking to uh, a couple of the Knots people next year. I'm like, have you guys ever thought about introducing stuff like that where you can give to other characters or like play with the lore of that? And I'm glad you guys did stuff like that because that really right there opens up the, okay, we're playing some Scooby-Doo now. Who did this? Who wrote this? We're going to get to the bottom of this. Did anyone ever figure out who wrote that? Oh, man, we got some great theories. Did like, <laughs> uh, So the, the, the secret between us, between all of us, was that they were all the same note that was circulating. There were two different notes, but they were essentially the same. Yeah. And different characters got them. And there were some really spectacular theories out there about who, like, Reggie wrote it to himself. No. Like, things like that. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember what were – there were, like, guests were coming up with things that were far more advanced than what we were thinking with it, which I think is wonderful. It That's, really got people involved. The fan theories, yeah, those are always fun. Yes. I <laughs> love fan theories because um, that's something that you can kind of – think to yourself as an actor like oh what if mm -hmm. maybe i could include that and maybe it could be something i include in um yeah because i love the uh, just hearing the reading that story i mean you, i can already think of like so many people who that can be writing that to someone i mean there was of course the the you know the rumor of darren liking miss midnight falls so i mean darren you know even though he's playing it off like that's from bait and tackle something's fishy here could be him could be. Um, One of my favorites was Patty Parker. That was a theory. The the PTA mom, Patty Parker. Yeah, yeah. Someone says, well, she's very crafty. Maybe it came from Patty. Maybe Patty sent you that note. And, you know, Reggie has the freedom to be like, Patty's 20 years older than me. <laughs> Probably not. But it was the whole thing. It was great. You know what? And that was, the, that, was the, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go back. She was the only person we didn't get to interact with. Oh. Yeah. Um, and I think what had happened was we were so caught up in the moment interacting with you guys that when we went through all the mazes and stuff, I, I like, I saw Patty I like while well, as we were leaving I was like she's the one we didn't get to interact with no and actually there was another character added later too really later in the season we got an additional town square patron wow over at the hayride we got Earl jr. who's the son of Earl who owns the truck repair place that you go into for the hayride yes so Earl jr. got involved in our storyline and the disappearance of Earl's father which the councilman was involved in in some way we were all kind of suspect in so yeah. later in the season it definitely expanded you know even more on that there's just it's such like a little little universe in a way it's like it's it, it went from something so small to towards the end of this the end of the run it was this big thing at the end you started introducing more characters you started introducing more like theories as to who's writing these notes i mean it grew from something just small interactions to here's this note find out who who did this which i think is it's freaking awesome because when you when you introduce stuff like that even towards the end of the season it's one of those things where like people are going to want to come back next year now to see what's new if they if they continue this lore of midnight falls and introduce new characters there was another and now i forget and i forget the name of this there was a rival town that raven raven heights, raven heights. There can even be a storyline next year if they wanted to where they introduced the town of Raven Heights. You know, and I, we've heard so many stuff about that where we'd be like, we're, we're going to bring the girls from Raven Heights. And you're like, no, 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 not them. We don't we don't like them. Or um, we, we uh, even the, the cheerleader would go off and he dates girls from Raven Heights. And I was like, this place sounds bad. <laughs> I was like, they're making this place sound really bad if it's... Raven Heights is awful. Yeah. Raven Heights is awful. It's awful. Um, I liked even when people would try to tell you that... Uh, 
your diner was just as bad quality as uh, Roadkill Ranch. I'd like to give a shout out to Jill for giving that suggestion to you guys yeah. because that became basically the basis of my entire conflict with Jill for the entire season. That is was great. Like, I had a crush on Jill until she said this stuff. You Dude, know? that's <laughs> that's so good then that we, we were, she told us that and we reported it back to you and that became like the whole thing. Like I feel, I feel, I feel like cool that that happens. That like, that's awesome. You know, like you don't, as a guest, you don't even like know how much you're gonna add to the story after you leave. You know, that's one of the things. Where I think next year, if it happens again, um, I, I probably will check it out twice just so I can d make sure I got everybody. We also got a couple of uh, fan questions. Who these okay. are? These are fans who either um, are fans of yours or they attended the uh, event. I know we have a couple. Uh, we had a friend that actually attended the event. We talked about it when we went to Horror Nights one night. Um, but the first question I'm going to ask you is, if you had to dress up in any costume, character for the rest of your life, what would it be? So, the, yeah, the question was, of course, if you can dress up as one character for the rest of your life. And let's do it for both AJ and Reggie, just so we can get probably two different answers as to what you would think. Well, I would say for, for AJ. Yeah my number one favorite film of all time and it will never change it's 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 my favorite movie is willy wonka with gene wilder it's a great movie. if Fantastic. i could be any character if i had to dress up as any character for the rest of my life 100 percent willy wonka willy wonka yeah. yeah gene wilder in that movie is just phenomenal absolute i mean is. i don't i didn't they, you know they tried to do that with charlie and jack factory wasn't a fan of that one um but yeah when you go back and watch the gene wilder one like just from this, there's like that part where uh, they're going through the tunnel where he's crazy, and then, <laughs> like, you know, and, no, and I guess from what I've heard, no one knew that was happening but Gene, oh, yeah. which I thought was an amazing uh, little thing what they do in movies. And, you know, just his whole performance in that movie is great. Um, what about Reggie? What do you think Reggie would be? I have an answer for this. Oh, man. There is sort of a, I don't want to say it's canon, it wasn't given to us by Plague, yeah. but it became part of our story okay. that we knew everybody in Trick or Treat, the maze. Oh, okay. And all of those characters are also intertwined with us. Yeah. And there is a particular character who, again, had some connections to our characters through what Joe said or what the quarterback said or what I said that we all really enjoyed. When you experienced Trick or Treat, do you remember a little bastard, was their names, a little bastard trick or treater wearing a bumblebee costume with a shark mask with a baby mask underneath it? And a rainbow jumpsuit? And a rainbow do. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of info. Yeah. I may have missed yeah. that one. Well, she was one of our, uh, one of our trick or treaters. Uh, literally that baby shark, yeah. baby face, shark mask, bumblebee costume, rainbow jumpsuit. And we we love her. We love Baby Shark. And if, <laughs> if Reggie could be anybody, uh, if Reggie could dress in any costume for the rest of his life, I would go ahead and assume Reggie would would be Baby Shark. I think Reggie would take a look at that and be like, "Wow, that's just that's all me. That's, that's so me. That's yeah. all. That's all." Now, um, going back to that Reggie character, yes. you came up with this. It was taking place in the '80s, but you came up with this like '50s vibe for this character, which I really loved with the voice, the way you dressed, and everything. How did you come up with all of that? Well, a lot of it was given to me in reference materials from Ted directly. Yeah. There was video links I was given for a couple different characters that he was envisioning Reggie as a combination of. Uh, one of them was Art the Clown for his physicality. It was very mime-esque. Uh, a real short order cook I was shown a, a video of, but the one that really sold it for me and something I was already thinking for this character. Have you ever watched The Goldbergs, the TV series? Yes. So the main kid, Adam, on The Goldbergs was yeah. my number one point of inspiration for this character. And Ted had given me George McFly. And they're not that far off. They yeah. both talk like this. It's yeah. a kind of a similar voice. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was given George McFly his laugh specifically. So coming into it, you know, I had some idea of what, you know, kind of how awkward, how awkward he wanted Reggie yeah, yeah. to be. And then adding, you know, a lot onto that. And I'd like to give a shout out to Dax, our wardrobe man, and the whole wardrobe team who really, you know, had a a distinct vision for how he wanted them to look. Specifically, he said for Reggie, small, angular, pristine, like, you know, clean cut, bow tie, you know, Plague just gave us so much to work with that our, our job was easy, you know? Yeah, definitely. No, because that was one thing that really stuck out to me was Reggie's voice. Reggie's voice had that, like, <laughs> 50s nostalgia, which I really loved because it really, it really just brought your character, like, 
it popped. You know, I mean, there's not. You go to the hayride. You're the. You know, you're gonna remember everyone, but you're gonna remember Reggie the most because of that freaking voice <laughs> and the way he's dressed. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, see, look I at Reg, Reggie's here, man. <laughs> Reggie's here. Reggie, uh, that, yeah. Did I, you know, see more talks. I, I would have told you his voice. Let me hear. He has a Russian accent. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's pretty wild. God. Yeah, like uh, here, I'll, I'll I'll put the mic up to uh, up to Seymour. Yes, well, happy to be here. Yeah, you have a happy Halloween in Midnight Falls, yes. <laughs> yeah. I think that's great. You gave the pumpkin its own voice. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's great. Um, it seems like you guys had just a fun time doing all this whole thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I like I said, we, we went opening night, and the energy was there. And from what I'm hearing, the energy just went a whole new level as the event inc increased. Um and that goes to our next uh, question, which goes to uh, Will, who actually attended the event uh, with his girlfriend. And they had, again, an amazing experience with your character. Uh, uh, he says, what went into the process of memorizing the backstory of Haunted Hayride and what challenges did constant improv present to you? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, well, I think something that went into memorizing all of it I, I, not to say like I had I was at a personal advantage here in any way, but I had known some of the stories since the beginning of the summer okay. because I did voiceovers for the event. Yeah. So the front gate voiceover that details like the Roadkill Ranch and, and everything that was, was also me. Wow. So under a non-disclosure agreement at the time, I already knew a little bit of the the backstory before I went into the audition. Yeah. So that I, I think just gave me a little bit of like more confidence to present. You know. And concepts I'd known for a couple of months, but when it came down to our specific characters, I got information on Reggie less than like three weeks before we opened. Nice. And what really brought that, what really allowed me to memorize all of that in such a, a quick way, uh, is that all of us got to meet in Griffith Park as a group. And having people to think of when I say, you know, Jennifer Hernandez, Miss Midnight Falls, or Jill St. Stevens, the cheerleader, I'm picturing, you know, people. I can physically picture them now. It just made it so much easier to have visual clues, like, you yeah. know, visual cues, rather. Yeah. Like, I'm looking at you. I say, oh, Councilman Perkins. I can, I just associate the two, you yeah, know. Yeah. Challenges, I think probably one of the biggest challenges for constant improv, and, and this is going to, this is going to sound like odd, but the fact that it was 1985 led to both good and bad elements because you had a lot of guests that were like, what, you don't know what, you know, so-and-so is? Or you yeah. don't know what an iPhone is? Yeah. And there's a lot of that, like, having to address that, but not doing it in a way that's like, what is this strange device? Yeah. You know? Just like that was, I think, a challenge to maintain the time period in some ways or, you know, but but in a good way. Yeah. Because then it allows us to make a lot of, like, period references that are maybe funnier if people don't get it. Yeah. Talking about, you know, brick And phones. I think that was the thing with uh, us is because we knew going into that we, we, we were at the Midsummer Screen Panel, so we knew going in this was going to be all 80s. Mm -hmm. So when we brought up stuff like, uh, you know, Knight Rider and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like, oh, you have no idea how much I panicked when that happened because Knight I was Rider. like, please, please let me get this right, that Knight Rider is period accurate. Then it was like, okay, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. I try to, I try, what I try to do is I try to go anything before 85. Yeah. Is when I was like, okay, so I was like, Knight Rider. That's been around late seventies, early eighties. That's what so I was, was thinking like, too. Okay, so we're good on that. So thank I you was, for that. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking of stuff that were like, okay, what's before eighty five? We worked a lot with Ghostbusters and Back to the Future because okay. those were very recent at the yeah, time. Yeah, nineteen eighty five. Yeah, before and you know, yeah, yeah. that led to a lot of uh, other stuff like you know. Reggie liked to do really crappy Ghostbusters impressions sometimes <laughs> or Back to the Future impressions. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? That's, like right. just, that's, that's really good, actually. That's you. really good. Yeah, a lot of, you know, it, just a lot of stuff for pop culture references was, was a lot of fun, but also yeah. a challenge in that way. I can only, yeah, I can only imagine because there's probably – a lot of people, uh, and because I, you know, what was fun is, um, like you said earlier, this is an event for not only just people, you know, over the age of 13, but some people actually brought kids, mm -hmm. and you said that was a, a fun opportunity to kind of interact with kids as well. Yes. If you wanted to be scary, you could have been scary, but if you wanted to be, you know, Reggie, you know, nice Reggie, who wants to play Uno or something mm -hmm. like that, the kids probably had a ball for that. And that comes from a very personal place for me. Uh, I've been going to Not Scary Farm for over 10 years, yeah. and, uh, you know, when I was younger going there, I was introduced to two monsters who are legends now in that field, Smiley and Hollywood, okay. were two longtime monsters at Knott's, and they had... I think it was, it was a long time ago. It was over 10 years ago for sure. 
and I was in the parking lot just getting out to go to the buffet dinner and I, I met them first and I was a little intimidated despite loving Halloween and Haunts yeah. but they are like the nice monsters that you can meet as a kid and they'll introduce you to how great it can all be so having had the influence of monsters like Smiley and Hollywood from Knott's on my experience as a kid making it easier for me to transition you know being in a position to excuse me to potentially be like that for the next generation as Reggie you know when, when they would come through was really special to me and I, I even had a parent say you know my, my kid was crying and, and she wasn't handling all of it until you spoke with her yeah. and now she's having fun so and that's something we've been trying to highlight on this uh, on this on this podcast this this season uh, for Scare Actor Appreciation Month is not all scare actors they're not like they're not gonna go full method and just try to make you cry. There's mm -hmm. there's ones that will go out of their way to do stuff like you do. We actually had a guest on yesterday. He worked at Not Scary Farm. He worked in front of the waxworks maze, mm -hmm. um, and he you know greeted people in, and you know he had this kid that was crying, and so you know he offered to wait outside with the kid while the parents went in, mm -hmm. and he you know he he waited by the exit with his parents, and you know the kid was still kind of scared and stuff. So that you know he to kind of cheer him up. You know, in character, he was like, you know, you pick anyone in the line and I'll scare them for you. <laughs> and so he was doing that a ton with the kid. And by the time, you know, the parents came out, the kid was all playful and happy. His basic message to all the little kids that he would see crying and stuff was, this is not supposed to be something that you should be crying about. This is something that you should be, enter we're here to entertain you. Mm -hmm. And we're here to, of course, scare you. But after you get scared, to have a little laugh of it. Absolutely. And, and I think that's an overall message that should go around to all haunts where, yeah, it is a scary thing, and of course, you know, there is kids that will go in that can't handle it, which, you know, is totally understandable, but in the end of the day, it's something that you guys are doing to entertain people and, you know, scare with a laugh. It's how, it's how I go into every haunt because I love getting scared and I love laughing about it later. And I think that's a wonderful thing that he did, by the way. You, you yeah. know who you are from Waxworks. That's great of you to do. Thank you. It was um, Court. Court? Yes. You rule. And you, you absolutely bring up a, a good point there that there are some kids who go into it who, who do want to be scared and they yeah. have fun being scared and those are great for those kids, you know, but there are those that, that aren't ready for that. Yeah. And the other perspective I like to bring to it on top of that is, well, one thing Reggie liked to do a lot this season was hide underneath those triangular folding signs that say like bathrooms or whatever. <laughs> I'm small enough to fit underneath those. So I would hide underneath those. And there was a kid who came up to me while I was hiding under there and it's him and his mom and he's like clearly having the time of his life and his mom is like, excuse me, what's the path for him to go about like having your job someday and that was like Aww. how do I respond to this in character because it's also adorable yeah. but it's like you know part of what I think it's almost our obligation to do is to make sure that the next generation understands it's always supposed to be fun at the end yeah. of the day it's always supposed to be fun yeah yeah because you'll you'll have those nights where you have customers who are not you know the nicest crowd mm -hmm. then you'll have customers you know you have your pack nights and of course you'll have your your hardest nights but in the end of the day that's what should go in your mind no matter how hard the job gets or as much as some people go into this you know wanting to give up in the end of the night you're just there to entertain and have fun absolutely which i think is a, another big message for all scare actors is they just they at the end of the night they have a great time and that's what i love about doing what we're doing this month is because a lot of the ones who have you know held on and everything now we get to sit with them appreciate the work that they've done and hear a lot of their stories which is why we're doing what we're doing this month because when i when we decided to do this i hadn't seen much of this on the internet mm -hmm. now you, you see a podcast and it has like one scare actor and stuff but i hadn't seen a whole month of recognition for scare actors and this is of course this is this is a hard job for a lot of people because a lot of people have full-time jobs and then they come here to do you know their scare acting work and then you know if it's a thursday night like if you're at knots or horror nights you know you'd have to wake up the next day to go to that full-time job just mm -hmm. to come back again the next night some people get it like two or three hours of sleep if they were lucky and um we just want to recognize the people who put in put on that mask every night put on that character every night to entertain us because I feel that there's not enough recognition going around his characters. And I really appreciate that you guys are doing that. That's really yeah. very noble of you and something I'm really glad to be involved with. I, I am, We were so happy to get you, um, and we're hoping next year when we go to the Hayride we can get so many more people because there's so many stories that need to be heard. Um, it's coming to a point now where we're actually having characters contact us because they want to be on the show. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm blown away by that. Like, it's, it's already it's going out that far. This is a fun question right here. Okay. Why is Midnight Falls the best restaurant in Midnight Falls? Or Midnight, the Midnight Falls <laughs> Diner the best restaurant in Midnight Falls? 
well. Uh, there's many ways to answer this question. There are uh, Reggie could answer for you, but I think I'll answer on behalf of Reggie for this one <laughs> with some some jokes that started to uh, come about later. Well, obviously the biggest reason is the Roadkill Ranch is awful. What? That's not even a restaurant. It is. Yeah. It is a, a slaughterhouse. Ranch. It's a, yeah. It's literally a ranch that slaughters animals. It's not a restaurant. Definitely. So you know eliminate some of the competition right there like duh yeah not rookie ranch uh, a joke that used to come around later is i would say we're the best establishment because i'm clean i wear gloves and the gloves i i was wearing towards not the same gloves from opening night gloves later were pretty dirty <laughs> and they were like gray and had black on them and i'd say like you know why well, you know i gotta wear gloves to keep my hands clean and then i would take off the gloves and i had painted hands underneath too oh nice so it was a lot of you know like various reasons to to uh to, to hmm, let's see what else well of course you're not gonna go to the roadkill ranch i wear gloves i'm approved i'm not scooping ice cream with my bare hands which herschel does he likes it extra crunchy because <laughs> he has fingernails in them and on top of that i think the, the falls diner is the best restaurant in midnight falls because reggie works there reggie yeah yeah you got one guy working there man doing it all and he's friendly he's just looking for a date you know yeah no he just wants to meet that uh and i loved when we uh when we brought up the whole uh when when tim brought up the whole catfishing thing oh that was great yeah. and you were like what is this catfish is this where you go to the midnight the, the falls lake and you go go fishing with your cat see that's one of those things where it's like keeping it within the time period yeah can be fun because obviously we all know what catfishing is so to have a way to work around that in character is something I love doing. Yeah, because in the 80s, it wasn't as, as big as it is now. Mm -hmm. It's like a huge thing now, but in the 80s, you know, people really didn't know what that was. They probably or, didn't have a word for it. Yeah, they probably didn't have a word for yeah. it either. So, yeah, when we brought that up to you and then we explained it to you, we're like, well, that's not what I'm doing. It's like, you know, I'm do I'm, I just want to date with someone. That's it. Yeah. And I and we I, like I said, just you leading us to one person, they, they leading us to another person, and then eventually leading us into the mazes was just a great part on you guys because not only are you guys telling the story of Midnight Falls, but you're adding to the lore and you're getting people to go into the mazes, which um, is a big thing this, that they did this year was they added a little bit more mazes than they had in the previous years, which of course they've only ever had the Hayride and I believe Trick or Treat. And there was, I think, one other where it was a disorient, a disorient type maze where it was dark walls and strobe lights. Yeah. Sort of like the end of Trick or Treat, but yeah. as a whole maze. So obviously going for a really themed approach like the Midnight Mortuary and the Roadkill Ranch is something that's you know far more up my alley. Yeah. Which I, I really – and I love the whole story of this. There was – there was times where I honestly, like, and I keep saying this, I could have just stayed there all night just to talk to everyone more um, and just to interact with everyone. Um, I loved how uh, even as we were talking to you, you had kids c coming up to you like, hey, I'm going to go support your diner, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, and that was, and I thought that was really cool. Um, but yeah, man, it's just been, it's been a freaking, it was such a fun event. I don't know. I, I. I thank Plague for doing what they did this season. So do I. I they thank came Plague up, every yeah. day. <laughs> they, they came out and they really like revamped this whole uh, concept of the the hayride, and I think it really put the hayride on the map this season. And if it wasn't for Plague, I wouldn't have been involved. You know, I, yeah. I go way back with Ted Doherty, and I'm really grateful to have learned a lot of, about this industry from him. You know, growing up reading Ultimate Haunt. He seems like, and know? I and I've seen a lot of interviews. He seems like he's like the nicest guy. He is the nicest guy. Yeah, he yeah, really does. Both. Yeah, yeah. John, John, him and John look like as much stuff as they have working on. They are so relaxed somehow. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how they, they do it. Like those guys are like the busiest people during hot season and probably year round, but they look so relaxed. I think it's because they truly love what they do. You yeah. know, when you talk to them, you and and somebody had mentioned something behind the scenes, and uh, and I really think this was a, a great way to put it. Somebody was trying to describe Ted, and they said. Ted always looks at us like he's a proud father. <laughs> and it occurred to me, it's because he is. This he is, is his yeah. baby. This is like, you know, he cares about Halloween as much as we do. Yeah. And when he is in that position to put out something like that, it's totally unique 1985 Halloween, like this, this concept that came from his brain and John's brain, you know, I think he has a lot to be proud of, and I'm proud to have been involved with it, and I just love the passion that went into it. Ted and John, if you're watching, we'd love to sit down with you one day. Also, I love you. Hi. And AJ loves you, man. <laughs> without, without, uh, without these two, man, AJ wouldn't be as Reggie this year, and uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, we're coming down to the last final questions that I, I just personally, I've been asking a lot of the characters this season, okay? And because I'm curious to see how, uh, how a lot of people get into character. And uh, I've hear I've heard various stories this season. What do you like to do to you know prior to the event to get into character? Do you like listen to music? Do you just sit down in silence? Do you just read a book, or do you guys hype each other up? How, how does that work out? For Town Square this year, uh, without fail, almost every night there was a little bit of a ritual, shall we say, that was spawned from the props I brought with me. 
there are, you know, obviously many picnic tables in Griffith Park, reportedly some of which are haunted. True yeah. story. And we would camp out at a certain picnic table uh, and play Uno as a group. So okay. all of us in Town Square would play Uno. And it was it, that really brought us closer to each other than just going out on set and being like, hey, good morning. And then you go out on set right away. Yeah. Having those moments to play Uno and be jokingly competitive and, and whatnot, you know, really allowed us both as performers and as characters to really just get into the headspace of, you know, we all know each other. We all love each other. And we're here as a team. Definitely. And I think that's what really brought it out every night was being able to bond with them over silly things like Uno, where I always won. Yeah, because I, I, I remember one of the scare act, the actress, the, I, and I always, I don't know why I keep forgetting her name, the cheerleader again? What's Jill. her name? Jill. I, uh, I follow her on, on Instagram, and on the last, I think, night or the last weekend or the day after, she probably saved everything, she put on, uh, on her story, she interviewed each one of you. What was your favorite moment of the season? Which I thought was such an amazing thing because you don't see that with a lot of scare actors. You know, you don't mm -hmm. see like behind the scenes stuff where, hey, what was your favorite moment this season? And everyone had an answer, and everyone just looked like they were just thankful to be part of this this family. Absolutely. And um, and I love when when as an actor you guys have that chemistry because it really brings the the story of Midnight Falls to life. It brings the event to life. And if you guys just have good chemistry with each other in and out of character, it's just you've just grown a second family absolutely and that's something i'd also like to give a shout out to all right you were saying yeah good sir so i uh, know on that subject of you know having chemistry with each other and and adding something to it you know each other i'd also like to give a shout out to our cast of understudies in midnight falls some of whom started as understudies and ended up full-time in those parts towards the end and our understudy cheerleader and our herschel was an understudy who became full-time yeah having fresh blood in town square and having more ideas that bounce off each other and like you know if an understudy suggested something and, and we love our understudies definitely if they suggested something you know we'd kind of ask like can we integrate that like yeah like being part of a team where no matter if you were a permanent cast or understudy or a maze character that was integrated into our story you just had this feeling that we all understood and loved the story and each other and it was about building that as a team and I think that did continue behind the scenes and Definitely. our cheerleader is, is, is a wonderful person and really wanted to make sure we all had that moment to reflect on our you know our favorite moments and my favorite moment actually came from her so <laughs> yeah because I remember uh, when I would do theater I did theater in high school I was a uh, sound usually and then on my last year I decided to act a little bit um, we made sure that our understudy nights because we had understudies as well uh, we did a whole night just for the understudies we did like I think two nights out of the five like the five nights we were on just for understudies just mm -hmm. so they can they can go out and you can see their performances and it's almost like seeing two different shows in a way because mm -hmm. you're seeing di people act the part a different way in their own style and everything which i which i always loved about um understudy nights and yeah shout out to understudies because they are just as much of the cast as you guys are because they are the ones that if someone if someone calls in sick or you know someone can't make it they're the ones that step in and, and, and keep that lore going. Absolutely. Or, like you said, giving ideas, <laughs> which is another big thing. Um, they're giving you ideas, so maybe we can try this with the character. Maybe we can do this, with, you know. And under, shout out to understudy Reggie. You know who you are. You were great, too. There was a part when I watched a video with our understudy Reggie who uh, the guy was saying, like, hey, give me a shout out. He's like, okay, what's your name? Alfredo. Alfredo, I love the cheese. No, that, that's my name. Okay. <laughs> Hello. No, shout out to the camera. Oh, okay. Hello. So, you know, just having like concepts like that, you know. Yeah, because, um, yeah, like I said, I and I wish we would have gotten to a chance to see Understudy Night or when they would come out or whatever because, like, like you said, it introduces a whole new, uh, a whole new kind of an area to the character that you don't get to see usually. And Jill really, understudy Jill, you know who you are, I love you, really dragged on the, like she really egged Reggie on, like in, oh, a, in wow. a great way. Like there was, a, I brought her pieces of pine cone, that was, I would find things, and I yeah. found pieces of pine cone and would send these pine cones over to, to Jill. And her response to me in front of a group of guests was something along the lines of like, oh my God, that's so sweet. Well, thank you for giving this to me. It's really nice of you. But why don't you do something else, okay? Go take this pine cone, go bury it in the forest at Midnight Lake, okay? Wait for it to grow into a tree for six months, okay? And then bring me a flower from the tree, but don't talk to me until it's done growing in six months, okay? <laughs> And I'm just sitting there like, whoa, I did not expect that. <laughs> you know? You're like, you're trying to stay in character, but at the same time, you're just blown away. And, I'm, like, and Reggie's like, okay, okay. that's great news to yeah. Reggie. He thinks he just yeah. got that date oh, six yeah. months from now. That's, six months that's from great, now. You know? So having every, you know, everybody building the story and just giving us stuff to work with, like I could not be more grateful for guests like you guys yeah. and for performers like the ones I had the chance to perform with for just m allowing me to feel so free to just 
do and say all this stuff that it you know it's all about the art man all about the art oh no they can't right? spell heart without art that's one of reggie's catchphrases can't spell heart without art he's exactly. a fucking artist yeah so. um <laughs> you brought a you brought some more props I I'm, I, I'm i'm curious did. to see because i didn't want to log off before we got to sh showcase a lot <laughs> of the props i know that letter just had me dying the letter was awesome what else you got in that bag of goodies there? Well, throughout the season, as Reggie became a collector and proprietor and cre and creator of art, uh, I'll talk about the pumpkins for a moment, then I'll show you these. Some Definitely. of the pumpkins that I created, one of them, which you can see in a video from Justin Scard, is a pumpkin just penetrated with forks all over it. It's just plastic forks stuck in a pumpkin. Nice. And it was called forklift, and I would lift <laughs> it with my hand. There was, cons no, I'm not gonna say it like in my regular voice. Reggie would say, this speech is called consumerism. <laughs> and it was a pumpkin covered in trash that I found from guests. Wow. And I would pretty frequently carry around a roll of scotch tape with me in my pocket. Nice. This is one of those. Badly tape my hands together, tape things, and, you know, and tape trash to a pumpkin. And it had a pretzel truck cup on top and ketchup and receipts and napkins. So consumerism, the bottom half represented President Reagan's economic structure and the top half represented the inflation of wealth. There was also one called Lifeline, which was a pumpkin with a twig stuck in the top in a piece of pretzel that a guest dropped out of their mouth. I picked up and put wow. on the pumpkin. That's, that's and, awesome. And last but not least, there was a pumpkin called Uno. It was just a small pumpkin with an Uno card taped to it. Uh, I don't have my Uno cards on me here. There's plenty of props here, but the Uno cards are, are just too beat up to even take anywhere now. Yeah. And they're covered in blood and stuff, <laughs> uh, actually. <laughs> wow. So Monty Revolta and I had a bit where I would win the pumpkin carving contest. So yeah. Monty would say, you know, we're going to announce the winner of the pumpkin contest. It's Reggie McTavish. And he'd have some goofy runner-up. You know, like Miss Morte, his assistant, would have, like, a totally smashed pumpkin, and that was the runner-up. Yeah. So when it came time for the Uno... Monty Revolta is, is incredible. Like, he it, it is incredible. I, okay, I had never heard of him. I had never seen him prior to Haunted Hayride. We had just gotten off the Hayride. He just started his show. Mm -hmm. And it was the one, because I know he did a couple different types of shows, yes. depending on the night you went. Yes. And we went that Saturday, which was the opening day. And he did a show with uh, two of the, like, they were zombie. Yeah. Yeah. You saw the Shocktail Hour, which was the cocktail party version. That was the funniest show I've ever seen in my life. He's so amazing. Like the freaking his assistant would come out and you know one of my one of my favorite parts of the whole show is he had a thing of ashes. He drops them all over the floor and he's like, "Oh shit." And then the girl the girl comes out with like a freaking leaf blower and starts blowing and he's like throwing the stuff that, you know, you know, get off stage and he's throwing the props around. I was just dying watching this show. I'm glad to hear that because so were we. Yeah. Like he, every night he would give us such a you know a bright spot to look forward to, and like interacting with him in the show and watching his show was such a pleasure. And integrating us into it, he had little bits with like he would sing the Miss America song, but it was now Miss Midnight Falls. And Jennifer would be there, or he'd have Jill doing you know cheerleading for his calisthenics segment. So for Reggie, uh, you know, I'd win the pumpkin carving contest, and when it came time for the Uno pumpkin, which is literally just an Uno card on a pumpkin, we did a Who's on first. He says, "What's your pumpkin called?" Uno. <laughs> no, I don't know. What is it? Uno. No, I don't know. What is it? <laughs> so that was, you know. I, That's hilarious. Monty, I love you. So anyhow, there was other props throughout the season. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce these the way I would as Reggie. Uh, I don't have one of them here. The, the main one I would use was a severed ear. Okay. And I would say, do you want to see an original Van Gogh piece? <laughs> <laughs> I would freaking die if I heard that. That It was one of my favorites. Uh, and again, the suggestion came from a guest. Thank you. Whoever said it's a Van Gogh, thank you. Changed my season. Uh, <laughs> and that yeah, that ear uh, ended up in my mouth one night. I, nice. yeah, I I commit to the bit. It was a latex ear. We don't know where it came from. It ended up in my mouth. <laughs> Comedy is pain. Comedy is pain, Anyhow, man. I'm going to ask you these things. I'm going to show you these things as Reggie, okay? All right. Do you know what this block of wood goes to? What? That's okay. I don't know either. <laughs> Well, you know, you really got to hand it to me for trying. <laughs> so then sometimes I'd have the severed ear and I would say, you know, did you know? Yeah, Van Gogh cut this off himself. They say he went unhinged. <laughs> it's a door hinge I found in the ring. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of drama in this town. Sometimes I like to stir things up. <laughs> Just a coffee stir. Oh, God. And then, of course, there is a crossword puzzle that I would fill out with guests. Thank you, guests. And this was particularly notable because, as you can see here, I, I'll, 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 I am not making this up. I'll have him read it instead. What is 28 down? Corrupt. Yes, 28 down is corrupt. Now, what do you see here for 28 down, four letters? 
Tony. Tony. Tony Perkins, the councilman, is corrupt. <laughs> it's corrupt. So I have a real easy one to go through there. <laughs> and, you know, just, again, having that teamwork to understand, like, just give him a heads up. Like, there's probably going to be some random things happening from Reggie or messages getting relayed from Reggie. That's the other one. We got Miss Midnight Falls to send her a message. Hey, we're sorry you lost the beauty contest, and now you're a drunk at home. Oh, and, oh my God. You know, stuff like that. Like, it, it carried through each of the mazes, and I'm really grateful for that because everyone was incredible and lovely and wanted to build the world as much as we did. It sounds like a freaking fun time. This is one haunt that I would love to be a part of if I ever had the opportunity to do so. Um, one last thing before we sign off. Now, there's a lot of people out there who um, who want to become scare actors and, and, you know, they just don't know, you know, which routes you usually go. What is your advice for people who want to be scare actors? That's a great question. Uh, I am very grateful to have been haunting for seven years now. Yeah. This is a large part of my life, and it was a large part of who I was growing up as well. I was watching, you know, DVDs of... Do you remember Season of Screams, the nonce documentary yeah. from Haunted Media? Back in the day, those those DVDs, you know, the number, the first thing I can say is just watch, enjoy, be a guest, be a guest, enjoy, interact. And thanks to channels like you guys and TLEV Media and everybody else, there is so much accessibility yeah. to seeing the end product of what the scare actors do. And similar to what I grew up with, with Theme Park Adventure, rest in peace, TPA, and Haunted Adventure. Media, you know, having those, an ultimate haunt, Ted Doherty's website, yeah. having those on the internet to, sh to confirm for me what I want to do, like what, what I feel inside me about being a scare actor is real. Yeah. It, like there are people who do it, having that accessibility like thank you to you guys for, for for perpetuating that because some of those sources are gone now and having YouTube channels like you guys you know really the first thing I can say if you want to be a scare actor watch the videos go to the events interact you know just learn what you can from observation and from there if you're under 18 pursue home haunts that's yeah. how I started when I was very young I started in the home haunts and uh and then just, you know, shoot your shot and don't be afraid to be crazy or make mistakes. You know, wh one thing with Reggie is I just felt so much freedom to just really do do whatever. Go with your gut. Be as big as you can. And if you look silly, that's great. But just don't be afraid to unleash, you know, if you have a wild idea, well, I'm going to go, you know, as long as it's a safe idea. Yeah. Just run with it. Show them something unique. Show them that you're not afraid to hold back. Don't hold back. And I feel like with companies like Plague and, and you know, Not Scary Farm... Queen Mary Hayride they give you the freedom to bring characters to life 100% they give you because you look at places like uh, Knott's and Queen Mary they give you the freedom of like okay you're trying out for a street position what's your character right they give you this freedom to create your own character and bring it into the lore of what they're trying to do and with Hayride you said week after week you guys would just show up with different ideas they gave you guys the freedom to try them out if they didn't work it's a good thing you tried it and you know for next time if it did work you had something to go for the rest of the season. Absolutely, I mean? and there was a rule that that got out there, which I was I was quite grateful for. Uh, just going, f talking about going for it. This was kind of a, a thing where I was like, "Am I gonna be allowed to do this?" I thought to myself, "Am I gonna be allowed to bring food and eat it as Reggie?" <laughs> and it ended up actually yes. I got approved to eat food, so I would eat cake and pie and burgers and pizza and whatever Reggie could find. Would you kind of advertise it for like Falls Diner? Yes, hundred so. percent. I awesome. would walk around going like, like, "Why do you have food?" I made it. I duh. Made it. <laughs> you know, like. The, just ha like giving th companies like that that give you the freedom to make it your own and have fun with it within of course the rules and within being yeah. safe is to me that you know the biggest blessing I could ask for and that that was very strong from from plague and 13th floor and I you know just if you want to be a scare actor go for it definitely that's all I can say is just go for it there is no right or wrong when you're first starting out just find what works best for you find what company works best for you or event or character experiment in the home haunts and then once you have something that feels best for you something you're comfortable in go for it definitely one last thing I want to talk about before Absolutely. and it was a thing that I thought about um, I loved it when you would talk about the soup of the day and you said it was a pumpkin soup and you said the secret ingredient was squash mm -hmm. that was just hilarious <laughs> a lot of the improv you did this season was hilarious we had Thank a you. great time i could tell you this right now me tlev my co-host sammy we still talk about you to this day thank you and it's just that's how you know the impact you had on this event that's how you know the whole the whole cast the jock we me and uh, another buddy every time we see each other we yell out what's up bro <laughs> and i and i and i kind of have a feeling by the end of the night because we saw the jock so many times that night 
He was getting tired of us. He's like, damn, these kids are back. <laughs> these kids are back. Oh, I highly doubt we were thinking that. We love you guys. No, we had we had such a blast. Um, AJ, thank you so much for taking the time out of your thank day you for to, asking to, me. you know, to come out. And, and, and I know it was kind of a drive, and I really appreciate you coming out and sharing your stories, sharing what it's like at the Hayride, just in general for, for advice for future scare actors, hopefully. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do you have anything also? By, do you have anything you want to plug in social media or anything that you? Sure. If you want to follow me on Instagram, you can at AJ Dana. That's A J D A N N A. Are we going to put a link there? Is that how we'll that works? A, we'll we put a link down yeah, there. Down there. Yeah. On the Instagram, mm -hmm. go you get his go to get his name right there. Yeah, I have yeah. him on uh, Instagram, so I will put that username down there. And I do voiceover, so you check those out if you want. And he's got a website on his Instagram, so check out his website. He's been in a lot of stuff. You may have you may have not seen the face, but you've probably heard the voice. So, yeah, definitely keep this guy is such a talented person. Again, I'm so grateful that we had him on the show. And uh, again, thank you for bringing the character of Reggie to life. Thank you for uh, help being part of this amazing cast of the, you know, Midnight Falls LA Haunted Hayride. Uh, again, this was probably one of my favorite events this season due to the fact of you guys interacting with us. And we couldn't be more thankful for that. Well, you're very welcome. <laughs> thank you. And happy Halloween. Oh, I know. Right. Uh, Stay tuned for more episodes of Scare Actor Appreciation Month. We're doing this because we want to show appreciation to the scare actors who put their, uh, who put, you know, take that six weeks out of their lives in, in October and, you know, come on and put on some of the greatest shows in the world. And uh, we're doing this to simply appreciate all of you guys um, as scare actors and um, just show you that we're thankful for all of you. We don't look at you guys as scare actors. We look at you guys as our heroes because you help bring stories and nightmares to lives thank you yeah so uh thank you so much people for watching another episode of character appreciation month be sure to follow us on twitter at knights of horror and on instagram at the knights of horror to figure out what we're doing next um of course if you guys are feeling extra generous you know become a, a patreon i'm on page i always get this one confused become join us on patreon we have a, a list of tiers from a dollar to twenty dollars and if you can't do that a simple subscribe like and comments are just always awesome for you guys to read especially leave comments because i know the characters love reading your guys's kind words um so, so uh again aj thank you so much for being on the show and uh hopefully if you're doing something next year we would love to have you back thank you very much yep uh we'll see you guys next time